Hello guys, my name is Sayed and in this class we are going to start uh, solving IGCSE computer science past papers and so today we will solve the past paper of May and June 2023 and make sure to, to know the code this is 0478 okay so let's begin uh, solving the paper so uh, here's the first question okay question number one a binary is a number system used by a computer Take one box to show which statement about the binary statement a binary number system is correct. So which statement about the binary number system is correct? So uh, option A is uh, it's a base one system, which is incorrect. Uh, it's a base two system. Yes, binary is a base two system. So this answer is correct. Uh, let's see the option C. It says it's a base ten system. No, a base ten system we call it binary number system, which is from zero to nine. Then it's a base 16 system. Base 16 system is called the hex system, hexadecimal system, which is the same as dandry from 0 to 9. And then we have A to F, okay? So 10 is A and B is 11 and so on, F, okay? So the correct answer is B. Option B. Uh, dandry numbers are converted to binary numbers to be processed by a computer. Convert these three bind, uh, three dandry numbers to eight bit binary numbers. So make sure you know the, understand the question. We need to convert those three numbers to dandry numbers. Uh, the dandry numbers to eight bit binary numbers. Right. The first number is fifty. Let's use the divide method, which is easy, and there are less chances to make a mistake. So first one is fifty. So fifty divided by 2 is 25. 25 divided by 2 is 12. 12 divided by 2 is 6. 6 divided by 2 is 3 and 3 divided by 2 is 1. Okay, so now we need to add the carry. So if the number is even, we make 0. The carry is 0. If the number is odd, the carry is 1. 3 is odd number. That is why carry is 1. 6 is even. 0. This is 0. This is 1. And this is 0. So how we uh, write the bits? So we write from top to bottom. I'm going to explain it by this way. So what is the answer? So its answer is one one double zero one zero. So one one double zero one zero. So read the question one more time. We need to give the answer in eight bit binary number. So here we have one, two, three, four, five, six bits. So we need to add two zero to make this number eight bit. So that's our answer. Next question is one zero two. Okay. We use the same method, divide by 2 is what, uh, 5 and 1, okay, 25 is 12, 6, 3, and 1, okay. Same thing, if the number is odd, carry is 1, if the number is even, carry is 0, 0, 1, of one and zero. So write the the numbers from top to bottom. Okay. So what is the answer is double one, double zero, double one and zero. Let's count the bits. Three, four, five, six, seven. We need to make it eight bits, so we add one zero. Okay. Done. Now let's uh, solve the last question which is two to one. Okay, it's a big number. Two to one divided by 2 is 1 and 10 okay then divide by 2 is 5 and uh, 5 divided by 2 is 2 and 7 divided by 2 is 1 and 3 is 6 is 3 uh, 1 okay. so let's, let's add the, the carry one zero one 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 zero and one top to bottom okay so let's write so it is one one zero triple one and zero one let's count the bits one two three four five six seven eight so this is the correct answer so here is the correct answer first this one second and third Okay, let's move to the next question. Okay, uh, question C, part C is 
binary numbers are stored in register okay so registered could be 8 bit usually it's 8 bit so just keep in mind negative binary number can be represented as binary using two complement okay so this is the method we convert the in the numbers to to negative numbers computer use two complement to represent binary numbers and uh, as a, as a signed number or negative numbers complete the binary register for the binary numbers minus 7 8 okay so you must show all the working uh, working and working spaces here so first step first step you find a number which is minus number we simply write it as a positive number so minus 78 we write it as a positive number okay so let's write the 78 now we need to convert 78 to binary okay uh, first step is convert to binary so let's let's do the divide method two and three and nine okay one nine Uh, and we have the 10 and 9 we have the 8 4 we have 2 and we have 1 and the carries 0 0 1 and 1 and 1 and 0 so binary is 1 double 0 triple 1 and 0 so this number is 8 bit number right so let's count how many bits we have 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 so we add 1 0 okay now we need to convert uh, use the ones complement okay first we need to use the ones complement okay let's choose ones complement in ones complement we just flip the bits 0 become 1 and 1 become 0 okay it's very simple so 0 this 0 will become 1 this, these three one become three zero these two one become uh, zero become two one then we have zero and then we have one next step is to take the twos complement of uh, this number so add the twos complement in twos complement we simply add one to this to uh, one's complement number okay so remember we're just adding it here okay 1 plus 1 is 0 and 1 carry 1 plus 0 is 1 and then we just add, write the same number 0 0 1 1 0 and 1 okay so this is our answer let's add this to this register here so 1 0 1 1 0 0 1 0 so that's the answer let's move to the next question part d two 8-bit binary numbers are given okay add two 8-bit binary numbers using the binary addition give your answer in binary and show all working like okay. before doing uh, solving this question let's, let's revise uh, the uh, the rules okay for adding binary numbers so first rule is a zero plus zero it will it is all always equal to zero the sum will be zero and carry will be none okay one plus zero is equal to sum is one and carry is nothing and 0 plus 1 will always be 1 and no carry if it's 1 plus 1 the sum will be 0 and the carry will be 1 and if it is 1 plus 1 plus 1 then sum will be 1 and the carry will be 1 okay we need to keep in mind these these rules when when adding the binary numbers two binary numbers so let's use those rules first one plus one one plus one is what is is the uh, zero is sum and one carry okay again one plus one which is zero and one carry one plus zero is one zero this is one one plus one again is zero and one carry okay one plus one is zero and one carry and one so this is our answer okay Let's move to the next question. Uh, e, uh, two binary numbers are added by a computer and an overflow occurred. Explain why the overflow uh, occurred. Okay, so overflow. 
so why the overflow occurs? So it's a, it's a very, uh, very important question. Usually they have this, this type of question in the exam. So if the calculation is greater than 255, which is this number 255, we cannot store inside the 8-bit register uh, because of that thing, the overflow error occur. Okay, so you can just open the book and see the answer about the overflow and write because it's too long. I don't want to waste your time. Okay, a student has a song file that is too large to be stored on their external storage uh, device. The student compressed the song file to make the file size smaller. The compression method used to reduce the sample rate uh, and the sample resolution uh, of the sound file uh, st state what is meant by the sample rate and the sample resolution. Okay, so sample rate and sample resolution, you have the definition in the book. So what is sample rate? Sample rate is the, re is the number of samples taken in one second. Okay, so numbers of samples taken in one second okay one second what is the sample res resolution so sample resolution is number of bits per sample so simply numbers number bits per sample Okay, that's it. Let's move to the next question is B. Now identify which type of compression has been used to compress the sound file. Okay, so remember for the sound and the image file we usually use the lossy compression. Okay, lossy compression. Next question is uh, the student sent the sound file to a friend. The file is transmitted across a network that uses packet switching. Okay, so now we have moved to the packet switching. Identify two pieces of data that would be included in the header of each packet. Okay, so in the header, we usually have the sender address and, and receiver address. So that's the two information. So explain how the file transmitted uh, using the packet switching. So in the packet switching, the transmission uh, happened. First of all, we need to uh, convert the packet, okay, uh, into small packets. So convert the data into small packets. Step number one, and then mm, then the the data each packet take the independent route to reach its destination. And the third one, when it's reached the destination, they have to be reassembled based on their packet order. So these are the three steps. Uh, you can have a look or you can just write. Next one, uh, circle three component that are secondary storage devices. We need to component three secondary storage. So uh, let's get let's first get the definition. So primary storage is a storage that is directly accessed by the CPU, for example, RAM, ROM, okay? And the primary, uh, the secondary storage is a storage and the so storage devices that are not directly accessed by the, the CPU. So CPU, the first option is CPU, which is not a storage, okay? So compact disk or CD. Yes, CD is a, is a secondary storage. HDD or hardest drive. Yes, HDD is a secondary storage device. Uh, RAM is a primary, ROM is a primary, register is a primary, sensor, no need. So solid state, SSD, this is also uh, the secondary storage. So when those three options are correct, okay, in this, this question. Part B. Take one box to show which statement about the secondary storage is correct. Okay, so secondary secondary storage. Okay, yes, the underline this one so we don't forget. So it's directly accessed by the CPU. No, primary storage is directly accessed by the CPU. It is magnetic only. No, we have the um, the CD which is not magnetic. Okay, and uh, C. It is used to permanently store software and data. Yes, this is true. Let's read the last option. So it is volatile. No, it's not volatile. The RAM is volatile. So the correct option is C. Complete the statement about different types of software. Okay, so use the terms from the list. Uh, some of uh, some some of the terms in the list will not be used, and you should only use a term once. So we need to use a term once, and some terms will not be used. Okay, so that's just this is the information. Okay. 
First one is the Dash software provide the service to the computer requires uh, re requires uh, a, 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 an example is a utility software so system software so we have the word system here next one is the dash software runs on the operating system so we have application software that is run on the operating system so here is the application software And uh, the Dash system is run on the firmware, which is run on Dash. So Dash system, which system? Operating system. Yes, we have here operating system is run on the firmware, which is run on the hardware. Yes, we have hardware here. Okay, so that's it. We are done with this question. Let's move to question number five. A farm has the automated drinking system. Okay, for its animal, the drinking system has a water bowl that contain the water. When the water bowl is empty, it is automatically refilled. So this is the scenario, okay? The system uses a sensor and microprocessor. Identify the most appropriate sensor uh, for the system. So most appropriate sensor for about the, to know the level of water, I think it should be the uh, we can see the level sensor, right? Which will determine the level of the water and then trigger if the level is down. So this could describe how the sensor and the microprocessor are used to automatically refill the water bowl. Okay, so this is a long question, so I will just tell you the answer. So I think first step will be, uh, the sensor is, will be monitoring the, the level of the water. If the level of water is below some point, okay, then it will send a signal to the microprocessor and my microprocessor will trigger the, the the water motor to refill the the the, the bowl automatically okay next one let's go to the next question number six a user wants to connect their computer to a network okay <laughs> identify the component in the computer okay uh, that is needed to access the network so in the computer we need the nic NIC stands for Network Interface Card. Okay, NIC. Identify the type of address that is allocated to the to the component by the manufacturer, which is used to uniquely identify the devices. So uh, NIC manufacturer mm, give the NIC a unique address, which is called the MAC address or Media Access Control address. Okay, so the answer is MAC. A dynamic Internet protocol or IP address is allocated to, uh, allocated to computer when it is connected to the network. I guess so. Dynamic IP address. Identify the device on the network that can connect multiple devices and automatically assign them an IP address. So identify a device on the network that connect multiple devices and automatically assign. Also, this is the I think router, Wi-Fi router or router. Describe what is meant by the dynamic IP address. So dynamic IP address is the IP address that changes. Okay, so every time you connect to your network device, like from a router, it, you will have a new IP address. So that's about the dynamic IP address, or it's a unique IP address you 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 are assigned whenever you connect to the the to the router. Okay, a programmer uses a low-level language to write a computer program for a vending machine. Describe what is meant by a low-level language. Okay, so low-level language is the language which is not close to the human language. Okay, so for example, if you think about the Python or C language or C++, these are the high-level languages, and they use the keywords that are close to the human language. For example, if, else, okay, they have different functions like print. But the low-level language, uh, they usually uh, use the mnemonics, okay? So they have the keyword like STO, store, and those instructions. So the instruction is not closed, uh, closed to the human language. Okay, the example of low-level language is assembly language or the machine language. Machine language is zero and one. I give two reasons why a programmer would choose to write computer program in low-level language. So why they choose if they want to directly interact with the hardware, okay? Or you know, what else if they want the program to, to work fast so that's why they will use the the, the low-level languages a manager 
at a company is concerned about a brute force attack on employees use their account. Describe how a brute force attack can be used to gain access to the employee's user account. So in the brute force attack, a hacker uh, tried the all possible combination uh, to, to get the access to the, 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 the target account. Okay. Uh, one possible aim of carrying out the brute force attack is to install malware onto the company network. State aims straight to other aims for carrying out the brute force attack uh, to to gain access to employees uh, user account. So maybe you want to delete the file, delete files, okay, or install. It's on malware. Or just do some other things. So these are the two options, okay? Identify three types of malware that could be installed. So we have the virus. We have the um, adware. And we have the spyware. and Trojan horse and ransomware and so many. So these are the names of the malware that could be installed. Give two security solution that could be used to prevent brute force attacks. Okay, first one is the two-step verification. Two-step verification. The second one is the use strong password. And third one the limits the limits the limit password tries. So you can set the limit if somebody try the password two or three times wrong, then automatically lock the account. Okay. So this is the C. Let's move to the next question, question number nine. A company uses robots in the factory to manufacture large pieces of furniture. One characteristic of robot uh, is that it that it is programmable. Okay. So state two other characteristics of the robot. Okay, so nine nine A is a, it's a mechanical structure. It has a mechanical structure and it has the electrical components. So this is the two possible answer. Give two advantages to the company employees of using robots to manufacture large pieces uh, of the furniture. Okay. So employees does not need to lift heavy furniture. Okay. So employees can be protected from the dangerous task and the, the robots can work 24-7. Give one disadvantage uh, uh, to the company's owner of using robots to manufacture large pieces of furniture. So what are the, the, the disadvantages? So it's expensive to install of your purchase the robots. This is the first obvious one. Uh, high ongoing cost. So it's very high cost to, to give them the power or maintenance cost is too high for the robots to use in the company. A student use the internet for their schoolwork to research what is meant by the farming. State the aim of farming. So it's the state of uh, uh, the, the aim of farming is to steal the user's data. Okay, so steal the personal data. Steal user data. Draw and annotate the diagram um, to represent the process of farming. So in the farming, user is first get uh, infected with the malware and then when he's tried to open some website, the malware redirect it to a fake website, okay? So first, is, let me just say this is a computer, okay? Which is infected by a malware, malware. And then when user try to open some website, for example, he wants to go to the bank.com, okay? So hacker or the malware redirect him to a fake website that looks similar to the back.com to a fake website so this is a fake website okay so that's how it works so it should it's supposed to go here but the model will take it to the fake bank website so that's how it works on the diagram 
Okay, next question is, uh, the student uses the web browser to access data on the internet. Explain the purpose of the web browser. So the purpose of the web browser is to display the web pages. That's it. Simple is just, just display the web page. So, uh, storing cookies is one function of the web browser. Give three other functions of the web browser. Okay, so uh, you can think of the storing bookmark. Okay, it has the bookmarks. And it stored the history, browsing history. And it also provide the, 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 the navigation button. Okay. Okay, and also, yeah, I think these are the three that you can, can use. Also, multiple tabs. Multi-tabs. Yeah, so these are the, some, some of the options. A student visit a website that uses session cookies instead of persistent cookies. So explain the difference between the session cookies and the persistent cookies. The session cookies are the temporary cookies which are stored in the RAM and you close the browser, they are automatically deleted. Persistent cookies are stored permanently on your hard drive. Okay, so they are they stay there. If you delete them, then they to move or they have some expired yet. So that's how they work. So persistent uh, session cookies, they are temporary and the persistent cookies, they are permanent. Okay, so that's it. We are done with the paper one. Uh, let's uh, hope to see you in the next video. We will solve the next paper. So stay tuned and take care. Bye.